When our city started to collapse, the dark side of humanity took control of the streets. The second round of the Division Beta has come and gone, giving door-closing enthusiasts worldwide a chance to try Ubisoft's talkative, tactical MMO. And I was pleasantly surprised, truth be told. Before dipping in, I didn't think it was the type of game for me, but in all probability, I'm going to pick it up on launch. There's one aspect of the game, however, that I can't stop thinking about, and that's the loot system. Now, I know, I know, that's the whole point. You're meant to keep thinking about the loot system, obsessing over it even. Games like The Division live and die on the loot system as it keeps players coming back for more, and The Divisions, for the most part, works. It certainly scratches that magpie ass itch for getting more loot and seeing if it's better than your existing gear. But while I couldn't stop gathering loot in The Division, I also couldn't help wondering whether the game's setting made the loot itself a bit, well, boring. You gotta take what you need in this world. As you might expect, the Division's loot system is based around guns and armour. With the armour stuff, you get better gloves, torso armour, face masks, and knee pads. With the guns, you can pick up different weapons, of course, but you can also find mods strewn about the place. These include magazines, different barrels like stabilisers and suppressors, and there are also different scopes and grips, enabling you to see your target and control the rake of your weapon better. It's a comprehensive system with a decent amount of depth, especially the weapon mods, allowing you to really deep dive into the minutiae of your character build. Robust as this system is, however, I wouldn't go so far as to say it really thrilled me. I like seeing character stats improve as much as the next person, but it's just a bit tricky to get excited about a pair of knee pads or some cut-resistant gloves. I mean, they're knee pads. It's all a bit serious, and that for me jars with the main appeal of the gameplay, which is running around talking nonsense with a few friends and getting giddy because the person I just killed dropped a shiny new toy. Paradoxically, the very best bit about the Division's loot system is the creeping fear you might not be able to keep any of it in the first place. If you go into the dark zone, you don't get to keep or use your loot unless you perform an extraction, calling in a chopper and then attaching your bag of dark zone loot to a line that comes down. When you start an extraction, everyone in the area knows it, so they can come and attach their own gear, or just kill you and take yours for themselves. That happened to me once after a tent standoff, during which time I was assured these random players were harmless, only they weren't. As soon as the chopper arrived, we got cut down and all our stuff got stolen. It was hard to bear, but it was also exciting, and so the loot you get from the Dark Zone becomes more exciting because you had to fight to keep it. But really, that's just a testament to how well The Division approaches PvP gameplay. Exciting and clever as that system is, it doesn't change the fact the loot you're excited about getting is itself actually kind of boring. I mean, an egg and cress sandwich would seem more exciting if you had to fight someone in order to eat it, but that doesn't change the fact it's a pretty pedestrian lunch choice. Part of this, of course, stems from the fact a realistic game has to remain at least vaguely realistic, whereas sci-fi and fantasy games like dare I say it, Destiny, have more room to play with. If you look at it on paper, there's very little difference between loot in Destiny and The Division, but just look at how varied Guardians can be. Other games like Skyrim leave you agonising over whether to equip a new shield or helmet because it's so laughably incongruous with your current armour set. Compare that to the multitude of beanies, parkas and combat trousers on offer in The Division, and it starts to look a bit samey. And while it's not an MMO, look at the weapons on offer in Borderlands 2. They're procedurally generated, providing an obscene amount of variety in both stats and traits. There's still the mandatory focus on your damage stats improving, of course, but the variables between each gun make it truly interesting. One sniper rifle, for instance, might have an amazing corrosive damage stat, but it's burst fire only when you're zoomed in, which you might consider to be a waste of bullets. Alternately, you might pick up an assault rifle with a low ammo capacity, which is a pain, but then when you reload it, you just throw it out in front of you and it explodes like a grenade before a new one appears in your hands, letting you damage enemies even while you're out of bullets. There are also a bunch of different grenade and shield mods, broadening the customization options. Or there are loot systems like the one on offer in Vermintide, the game I refuse to shut up about. You know what you're getting with a new sword or a crossbow, but each one also incorporates a series of traits that are randomly rolled for each weapon when you first get it. Traits like Regrowth give you a chance to recover health on each kill, or they might improve your stamina. Now, both of these games are deliberately fantastical, almost cartoonish experiences, granted, but look back to your rifle with a hand stop that improves horizontal accuracy by 3%, and it just looks a little... bland. 
It's hard to escape the feeling the Division's aesthetic is hemming it in from a design perspective, making one of its core mechanics less appealing. And worse, there are a couple of areas in which Ubisoft does have room to play around, but they've gone for a very straight-laced approach. The abilities like the Sticky Bomb and Area Scanner are some of the best things about The Division, helping you really feel like you're playing a certain class, but the problem is these aren't tied into the loot system at all. Instead, you modify these abilities by purchasing upgrades at the home base, taking one of the most entertaining bits of the game and attaching a grind to it, rather than using it to make the loot system more exciting. If I could find a mod that increased the damage of my Sticky Bomb by between 5 and 12%, for instance, that would be pretty exciting. Instead, I know I'm faced with buying a fixed tech upgrade that will increase the damage by a set amount. Now, ultimately, I know there are people out there who will disagree with me, who don't care that the loot drops in the Division are pretty generic. They might even prefer it that way. I just worry that one of the cornerstones of the game, the bit that's meant to lend it lasting appeal and keep players coming back regularly for months, if not years on end, is so drab. The Division is an exciting game, but knee pads are not very exciting things, and I worry about the impact they're going to have on my attention span, even if they are softening the impact delivered to my knees. But anyway, that's enough from me about hats and guns. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. You might also like to check out some other stuff we've made about The Division. Eva shot a load of dogs, for instance, because she's a horrible person. We also had a look at how our team chat stacks up against the slick professional patter from the E3 demo last year. Or if you fancy watching Ian play the beta for an hour and a half, you can do that too. Either way, thanks for watching.